possibility that maybe, maybe Daniel Bryan might win the Royal Rumble. Now, the whole time that we were talking about this, I tried to make it pretty clear that Daniel Bryan was not in the Royal Rumble. Daniel Bryan was never scheduled to be in the Royal Rumble. And to my knowledge, for weeks, he was never going to be in the Royal Rumble. Now, I know that the odds makers had listed Daniel Bryan as a possible winner for the Rumble, so there is that. And I know that I know that a lot of people thought, well, come on now. It's the Royal Rumble. Daniel Bryan's got to be in the Royal Rumble, right? Well, he wasn't in the Royal Rumble. And uh, and a lot of people were very upset. My Twitter here, everyone's Twitter. If you're on Twitter, you see how upset everybody is. And I don't know. I, I guess the question to everybody, and I'll ask both of you this. The mm-hmm. question is this. Daniel Bryan wasn't going to go to the main event of WrestleMania. So are you more upset that he wasn't in the match? Or would you have preferred that he would have been in the match and thrown out? Because... There really was no chance of him winning, everybody. I mean, I think that Daniel Bryan and John Cena would be an awesome WWE main event for the championship. If you told me that was the plan, I'd have no problem with that. I think that would be awesome. But they're not going that direction. So so with that said, is it better or worse that he wasn't in the match than if he had been in the match at number 30 and then, say, Big Dave Batista eliminated him? I think it would have been much better if he had been in the match and eliminated. You think so? And, and and the match is better than I expected going in, but I mentioned this, you know, when, when Brian cut his promo on Raw challenging Bray to a match. Oh, Brian was shaking a uh, energy drink or something. Would you, would you ignore me? I <laughs> Just <laughs> talk. I That's why I turned my mic down. <laughs> I thought you were trying to get I'm gonna shake. I'll just shake it on the air, everybody, while Vinny's talking. Yeah. When Brian cut his promo on Raw challenging Bray to a match, he mentioned, hey, you're not in the Rumble. That means we can do a match. And I thought from the get-go, that means, well, that means Brian is not in the Rumble. And I thought that's a terrible idea because the whole point of the Rumble is waiting for big stars to come in and cheering for their entrance. So taking that out uh, uh, took some suspense out of the match. For those of us who who were paying attention, which may have just been me. He wasn't booked for the Rumble. I mean, it was was patently obvious that he wasn't booked for the Rumble. Uh, The fans in um, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? They were in Pittsburgh, yes. Yes, Pittsburgh um, were upset with, with number 30, Rey Mysterio. And we're unhappy to yeah. see Ray Mysterio. Poor Never Ray. Ray Bo- for, it's not his fault. Come right? on. You know what? Anybody anybody in the final five, anybody that was being booed because they weren't Daniel Bryan, none of them, none of them, Ray did not choose to take Daniel Bryan's spot. Ray was just a guy that happened to unfortunately be number 30. When he, when he came down and everybody booed, I was like, all right, you know, people are upset that Daniel Bryan's not here. Fine. Perfectly justifiable. I'm not mad at anybody that's, that was upset that Daniel Bryan was not there or did not win. However, I was like, man, they're really upset at this uh, not being Daniel Bryan. And and then you guys were like, no, they're booing Ray. And then other people were telling me they were booing Ray. And I was like, they cannot possibly be booing Ray. Oh, they were. They're, they're booing the fact that Bryan... And then Ray gets eliminated and everybody cheers. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, really? This poor guy. Phones are ringing off the hook. No calls, everybody. Don't call. We're just going to uh, recap this. Tomorrow, we'll do our call-in show. But uh, we got a lot to talk about. So, Vinny, I'm going to hand the reins over to you for the recap, and we will we will jump in. Before we get to the recap, I just want to bring up a couple of things. Uh, you were a call about a month or two ago. We were at a show in Seattle uh, where, again, Daniel Bryan was not supposed to be the focus, but the crowd wanted to see him. A lot of people said, well, hometown pop. Local boy made good. That's why they liked him. Uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 2,500 miles from Seattle. And he's still the guy the fans wanted to see. That's, well, that's number one. You know, let me say something. It is getting kind of ridiculous now. I mean, I, I can understand in like a, a hot city or Seattle, the guy's hometown. You know, when, 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 when Seattle hijacked Raw for Daniel Bryan, sort of like, well, you know, you probably should have expected it. Maybe not to this degree, but you probably should have accepted it. And uh, now they hijacked this pay-per-view, Pittsburgh. This is not Philadelphia, by the way. This is Pittsburgh, which which in the past has not been the hottest town. So they completely hijacked this show. And I don't know. I I I wonder if this continues if they'll if they'll do something, you know? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but when I watched it tonight, it was like this is kind of getting ridiculous. You know, it, it's kind of getting out of control now. What what could they possibly do? Push Daniel Bryan! 
saying. <laughs> it's complicated. I, okay. Put Daniel Bryan in the chamber and have him win the title or, okay. or have him beat Batista or something. Put him in the main event. Just do something. They're suggesting they call an audible on their podcast. Yeah, right it now. is okay. possible to call an audible because it's fake. They do have <laughs> they do have ten weeks or That's something. True. Yeah, yeah. They have time. Okay. Why is everybody calling? <laughs> We're not taking phone calls, everybody. Please do not call right now. Go on, Vinny. Let's start this review. I got two more things to talk about. All right. Both via the world of Twitter. Oh, I got one from Twitter, too. Well, they're, they're, I want to see when you, you, I'll, let, I'll let you do Mick. Okay. I'll do Daniel. Daniel Bryan, 14 minutes ago. Sorry, guys. The machine wanted me nowhere near the Royal Rumble match, but I thank you. Thank everyone for their support. You are the yes movement. They try to keep us down and away from the top spots, but they can't ignore the reactions forever. Keep voicing your opinions. Hashtag yes movement. You know, Brian's been very uh, vocal lately about this whole uh, yes movement and uh, and how the machine is is holding him down. Mm-hmm. And Daniel Bryan is not an outspoken political fella. Mm-hmm. So it does make me think that that uh, maybe something's coming. You know what I mean? I don't know. It could be. It could be a, a, a great work on the entire universe. Literally, the entire universe. And that's, well, no, it's not. A... All right. Craig? And this from Mick Foley just uh, 11 minutes ago. It says, does at WWE actually hate their own audience. I've never been so disgusted with a pay-per-view. That's an amazing tweet. Unreal. An amazing tweet. All right. So start with the pre-show. Uh, I got here in the middle of the pre-show match. and Not, not even in the middle. Got here at the very end of the pre-show match. Uh, Billy Gunn hit Cody Rhodes with a fame master and pinned him to win the tag titles. That's what I saw. Greg? Cr- yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I totally wasn't paying. The pre-show match. The show rules. Um, I'm, I apologize. I was no, no, at no. Keep... I was looking at Twitter. You've been guilty. Um, yeah, it, it was a really a nothing match. The Outlaws won, much to my surprise. I was shocked. It, there was nothing to it. So the pay per view began with the aforementioned to Daniel Bryan versus Bray Wyatt. Crowd loved them some Bryan. Uh, Harper and Rowan got ejected almost immediately. I'd never noticed this. Mainly because I think just because Bray Wyatt wrestles, or Bray, Bray Wyatt wrestles in long white pants, but his boots are awesome. Snake skin. Very cool. Very cool boots. Brian worked him over for a while. Bray cut him off with the uh, divorce court on the apron. Worked over the concussion. Kept attacking the head and neck. And uh, it was awesome because every time Brian would make a comeback, Bray would cut him off with a very basic move, just like a clothesline or a back elbow. He would just hit him really freaking hard when he hit these moves. <laughs> so he uh, broke out the crab walk. Fans told him that was creepy. And finally, Brian's going through his whole big comeback. He goes for the headbutt, which is kind of half headbutt, half splash. Or as JBL described, quote, I'm going to jump on you. <laughs> That's what it was. Yes. What was Bray so close to the corner for? I don't know. So uh, he went for the knee strike, but Bray rolled outside. So, with Bray on the floor, Brian tried a tope, but Bray caught him, and I mean caught him, and set him down on the ground, and hit Sister Abigail into the barricade, and then back in the ring, and hit Sister Ab- Abigail again for the win. A hell of a match. A great pay-per-view opener. People were a little pissed because Brian lost, but, uh, you know, I, I'm not going to complain about this match at all. And the Wyatts came back out, but then they just all went backstage together with no further carnage. Well, again, I mean, the plan for WrestleMania for a long time... And I, I still cannot even believe this, but it's actually happening. It's Bray Wyatt versus John Cena. And obviously, if Bray Wyatt is going to be facing John Cena at WrestleMania, then he should win this match. And uh, and again, the Royal Rumble plan forever had been uh, Big Dave Batista as well. So, um, I don't know. By the way, I mean, it, go ahead. You could always call an audible, but this this was no real surprise. This is the direction that they're going. I don't want to say they don't care what you think, but they think they know what's right. And thus, this is the direction they're going, and so this was the right finish. So of all the things in the world tonight to be trending, Jay Uso. <laughs> don't, sure. I don't know why he is. And F4W Live isn't trending. This is ridiculous. I know. This Although is- we have we have shattered our streaming record. I don't even know how many people are listening because the thing broke. Uh, so hopefully everybody is still able to get on, but it's killed our map. It's killed my listener. I, I, I am pretty, uh, anyway, let's go on the, uh, at the beginning of this match. Why in the world did Bray send the two flunkies to the back? He, 
the the ref didn't eject him. Bray the sent ref him did. Back. I Bray? thought the ref ejected. No, them. Bray sent him back. You sure? I think the ref ejected them. Craig. Now, Brian was on the floor, and Rowan went over, and put his hands on him, and the ref said, "Hey, stop that." I see. And the next thing I knew, the Giants were gone. The, getting back to the match, it was a great back and forth match. Uh, Brian uh, hit him with a tornado DDT on the floor. Yeah. Um, they hit each other really hard, and this match was really great. And um, go out of your way. Um, I'm just going to say it. The rest of this pay per view kind of sucked. Oh yeah. yeah, this was. Oh yeah, <laughs> this was by far the highlight. We did not this mention this. Show. It is confirmed that the ref ejected them. By the way, okay. And Bray told them not to fight it. I see. I see. That's okay. from Bix. That's right. Thanks, Bix. So there you go. Renee Young interviewed Paul Heyman backstage. He put Big Show over for a while, but said Brock was ruthless. He was going to take Showdown. He was going to go on to be WWE champion, and the company was going to be conquered by Brock the Unmerciful. <laughs> what is his shirt, by the way? Uh, eat, sleep, conquer, repeat. Okay. All right. Well, I got a Gracie Academy uh, shirt for Christmas, and it says eat, sleep, jujitsu, oh. <laughs> repeat, or something like that. Huh. So it's probably where he got it. But They went up to the experts panel. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, Shawn Michaels, and Ric Flair. And they gave this. them all big introductions. Everyone <laughs> cheered. They chanted ho, and they went woo. And Sean said the future of the company was in great hands. He was still putting all his chips on Daniel Bryan. And Flair turned to him and said, you live on a ranch and you have got to start riding the right horse. So <laughs> he said. Yeah. And then he uh, started talking about what a big scary man Brock Lesnar was. And he started going woo a lot yeah. and uh, went on for a while and Duggan said stuff and Flair asked what time it was. And this was on pay-per-view. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Sean, Sean even mentioned Look at this, Jim Duggan outdressing me tonight. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Ric Flair uh, had a little problem earlier this year at the uh, last year. Last year, yeah, and uh, and he was gone for a while, and now he's back, and he's supposed to be on his best behavior. Hey, I thought it was great behavior. I thoroughly enjoyed his behavior. Yeah, I enjoyed his behavior at the thing where Jim Ross got fired as well. Well, So they're going to fire Shawn Michaels or Jim Duggan tonight? Um, Josh, maybe? I don't think any of them will be fired. But I don't know if the company considered Ric Flair to be on his best behavior here. So if you don't see Ric Flair for a while, this could be why. He was nuts! We had uh, Big Show versus Brock Lesnar. This is the point where the pay-per-view went off a cliff and, to be honest, never really recovered. And I can't believe I'm saying that with a Brock Lesnar match, but it's true. So Brock jumped show before the bell, hit the double leg tape down, hit a bunch of ground and pound, grabbed a chair, beat him up a lot. Show cursed and got bleeped. In fact, he got bleeped for cursing many, many times, three or four or five times in this segment. So for like three minutes, Brock just beat up Big Show with a chair. And then the bell rang and the match started. This is stupid. This makes no sense. They wrestled for like two minutes, and Brock hit an F5 out of nowhere and won. Quick aside, Brock Lesnar hitting the big show with an F5 will never get old. This, so, this, yes, Craig? This went on forever. Yeah. This went on forever. Well, this the, beating, the, the beating went on the forever. The beating went on forever. The pre-match went on forever. The match was very brief, and the post-match went on forever. Right. And it I, was just Brock hitting show with a chair. I went to the bathroom. I took a, a stroll around the neighborhood. I uh, took took the cats out for a walk, and... Came back and he was still beating him. It was. Well, let's bad. think about this, everybody. It's Brock Lesnar and The Big Show. What do you think you're going to get? I've seen them have lots of good matches. That was 10 years ago. That is true. So, really, this was the best thing you could have possibly done with these two men. No. Yeah. You could have had Brock win and then go backstage <laughs> and then do anything else. Well, I think what they're doing, it's, it's called a storyline. I'm sure the idea is that Brock has killed the Big Show. Mm -hmm. Big Show is going to disappear. Brock will probably be facing The Undertaker at WrestleMania. Brock will be seemingly on the on the verge of ending the streak. And the Big Show will come out and completely destroy him. And then uh, Undertaker will win. Hmm. Clearly, the Big Show is going to return to get his revenge in a big hey, match. I don't, that, that, that's all fine. Watching this bored the hell out of me. Well, Everybody he did else. beat him for far too long. After beating him for far too long at the beginning of the match. So this sucked. Truth. 
Shield cut a promo backstage. I didn't think it was that bad. It was it was bad. Horrible, I don't man. know what you guys are expecting. Boring. One of these days, let's say that the big show comes back and costs Brock the match against The Undertaker. And then at the next pay-per-view, we have a big show versus Brock Lesnar match. If they go out there and do a 12-minute wrestling match, you're going to come back to me again, Vinny, like you did last week, and you're going to say, Brian, I apologize. You were right. <laughs> what they did at the Royal Rumble was better than this. No, I can't imagine that. You, oh, you will. Trust me. Still doesn't just mean this was good. If a 12-minute match is worse, that does not mean this is good. It wasn't great. It sucked. It was all right. It sucked and was boring. <laughs> Speaking, well, actually, I was gonna, the Shield promo was fine. Shield cut a promo. They vowed that they'd be the last three guys in the Rumble, and then it would really be every man for himself. And then at the end, they would all stand united. I enjoyed this. This is, this is a fine promo. Rain said that he had the winning number, and they started to bicker, and then Rollins made peace, and that was that. Renee interviewed Randy in a promo that's actually fascinating in hindsight. She was going through uh, the top contenders and Dave's in the Royal Rumble and Brock Lesnar wants a match and Bray Wyatt just beat Daniel Bryan, a former champion. He's in line and Randy started naming all these guys and he talked about Brock and Bray and Dave and even Punk and Bryan and he never said anything bad about them and then he mentioned Bray Wyatt, called him a Duck Dynasty reject, reject and a deranged hillbilly. Thought of all the people to pick on, he picked Bray. That's fascinating. Cena versus Orton. These entrances took forever, and it's not like they were cool entrances. It's the exact same light show music you see on Raw every single week. By the time this match started, from the end of the Lesnar match to the uh, opening bell for Cena and Orton, at least 20 minutes of nothing had gone by. Yeah. This show sucked. <sighs> I wanted a nap. The man speaks the truth. He's I was in rare form. So... The crowd was as bored as I was. They were chanting for Daniel Bryan. So these guys did their best to have a pro wrestling match, and these fans had zero interest in watching these men have a wrestling match. So they chanted for Bryan. They chanted, yes, yes, yes. They chanted, we want Daniel. They chanted for Randy Savage. So for the record, Randy Orton, WWE champion, was out overshadowed by a man who's been dead for years. Chanted Y2J, Undertaker. None of these men appeared. So, clearly, these fans were rejecting this match uh, in favor of, ideally, Daniel Bryan, but really anyone else. And so, JBL, and I don't want to speculate where he may have gotten this speech, but JBL... Vince! <laughs> Vince was telling him everything to say during this match. JBL began going off about what great physiques these men have. Yeah. Because in 2014, Vince McMahon still believes that the driving force in pro wrestling is muscles. Oh, yeah. I Listen, I have been talking about this for well over a week now. In fact, I think I quizzed you about this. I know I quizzed a bunch of people about this on various shows. Who is a better promo, CM Punk or John Cena? You asking me now? Punk, yeah. Punk. CM Punk. Absolutely. Who is a better worker, CM Punk or John Cena? Punk. CM Punk. Who connects great with the crowd, CM Punk or John Cena? Both of them. Both, okay. yes. So why is John Cena the face of the company? Because he's, he's got big muscles. Oh, yes. Okay, yeah. This is not news. <laughs> you know, I got to say something. Here he goes. I just got to say it. Like, Shall I get your soapbox? No, I'm just... I really would like to see Punk fly to the top. I have nothing against CM Punk, despite what some people might think. But when CM Punk did a did that interview with Ariel Helwani, and he said, I don't care about my appearance. That's fine. There's a lot of people that don't care about their appearance. In fact, that's great. It's great that you don't care about your appearance. I'm looking except, at one right now. I hate you, except when you want to be at the very top of WWE. When you want to be the top guy. If you don't care about your appearance and you don't care if you're third from the top, then that's fine. But if you're upset that you're not at the tippy top and you and you don't care about your appearance, then what do you think is going to happen in WWE? Now, if a normal person was running WWE, where it was all about who is who is the, getting the most popular with the fans, let's just push them, let's just try then maybe you can just go with anybody. But you know how it works. You know the score. You know who's in charge. You know who's running the ship. He cares about what you look like. And everyone quit calling! 
He knows what you look like. This and this is not just punk. This goes for everybody. This goes for everybody. Vince McMahon is a body guy. He is a looks guy. That's why this match was Randy Orton versus John Cena. Now, guess what? Maybe Vince McMahon is the only guy in the world who cares. But guess what? He cares. So yes, I'm looking at an, I'm looking at a crowd completely hijack this match. And listen, I'm not even defending this match. Who the fuck could possibly care about Randy Orton versus John Cena in 2014? I'm about to have a heart attack here. I feel like Flair. Somebody go get me a drink. 2014, I'm watching Randy fucking Orton and John fucking Cena for the fucking eight fucking millionth time. I'm sick of it! Everybody is! But guess what? Vince McMahon likes good-looking dudes with jack physiques. And so that's what you're going to get. It's sad. It sucks. But you know what? All I can do is encourage all of you out there in F4W Radio Land, the next time you go to a show, to just hijack the show again. Because that's your best chance. <laughs> Bix is telling me to drop an elbow on my jacket. That's next! <laughs> that's coming up next! You own a jacket? You're lucky the cats aren't in here. But yes, all you can do, all you can do is go to these events and 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 yell and scream and hijack the show. Because you know what? You know who wasn't Vince's guy and never would have ever possibly been Vince's guy was Eddie Guerrero. But you, the listeners, got Eddie Guerrero the championship. You did. Because Vince was not going to put the title on that guy. But you changed his mind. So if you keep doing what you're doing here on this uh, on this show here tonight and you hijack all of their shows... The day's going to come when they do something with him. So just keep trying. <laughs> just keep trying. Because at the end of the day, Vince will listen if it gets completely out of control. And this show was close to getting completely out of control. Because this just wasn't just one show now. It's been a few shows. So the best you can do is keep it up. But yeah, they didn't care at all about this match. So there were more chants. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, you both suck. End this match. This is awful. And my favorite, we want divas. We want divas. Actually, my favorite chant was when they locked up. Randy took him over with a with a, a head and arm, and the crowd started chanting. Literally, twenty seconds into the match, boring, boring. Yep. Twenty seconds in, immediately. Yep. And why wouldn't they? <laughs> Somebody sent me audio. I don't have it here. But it was from some match like three years ago where all they talked about in the commentary was this is the last time you'd ever see these guys wrestle. Yes. Hello? And then they just ignored it. Here it is again. I'm sick of it. Yeah. So. I actually, believe it or not, I like the match. The guys worked really hard. <laughs> I actually liked the, the match end, by the end. By the end, the crowd that really, really wanted to hate it couldn't help but enjoy themselves a little bit. They started hitting each other's finishers. And. Cena put on the uh, STF when suddenly the Wyatts appeared. And Lawler screamed, why? <laughs> That's a very poor imitation. So Cena went after them. He turned around. He ate an RKO. Randy Orton won. I could have sworn that when Stephanie McMahon came out and announced this match on Raw a few weeks back, she said there would be no interference. Did she not say this? Right. But Did, they they're heels. Actually, they didn't actually interfere to cost him the match. They just ran inter they they ran distraction they didn't interfere shut up Craig I'm just saying <laughs> we, you complain all the time about distraction finishes we got another one tonight this is stupid absolutely is stupid company the guys worked really hard and the match was not bad but oh god Renee interviewed the new age outlaws oh why it's beat up seeing everybody <laughs> <laughs> this was a major angle leading to WrestleMania oh, sure. and Vince is completely yeah. sick of it <laughs> Renee interviewed the New Age Outlaws. At least it's a new John Cena match you've never seen. That's true. Sure. That's true. I was wondering how they were going to get there. And, and Bray Wyatt looked great, although he was facing Daniel Bryan, so let's not get too excited. Yeah. Road Dog pointed out they had gone 14 years between title reigns, which was a new company record. 
And he said they had a victory party planned, and Renee was not invited. And uh, that's not very nice. I would have invited her. She'd be invited to any of my victory parties. Really? We had a bunch of promos with everyone saying, you know, here's why I'm going to win the Royal Rumble. And the very first man to speak was The Miz. Ha! Ah! I just laughed and laughed. So, this turned out to be actually prescient. Everyone in the US was talking about, oh, we're brothers. We got face paint. We're going to win and whatever. And he gets to Batista and he's standing there with no shirt. And he looks down at his pecs and he looks at his abs. And he looks at his biceps and he looks at the camera and says, exactly. And guess what? That's what happened. It went back to the experts panel. Hacksaw Jim Duggan, I don't know how close the, uh, what kind of attention he pays to the product these days, but his pick to win the Royal Rumble was Dolph Ziggler. Sean went with CM Punk or The Shield, any one of the four he thought he would get credit for. And then they went to Ric Flair. <laughs> all I can it, was, s- it was worse. Oh, no, it was better. <laughs> well, whichever way you want to look at all it. All I can say is that he was in full Ric Flair mode, and he was passionately endorsing Batista. I love Ric Flair. I thought Ric Flair was very entertaining. I thought he was the best thing on the show. But unfortunately, this is not what they find entertaining. I this disagree. is trouble. I disagree. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. So it's time for the Royal Rumble. Do we need to do all 30 guys in order? Yes. All right. Seriously. We'll go through it guy by guy. CM Punk, of course, was one. Seth Rollins was number two. He has some very <laughs> wacky screams. <laughs> I hope it, I hope your play by play increases uh, in quality from here. <laughs> Nothing happened. They didn't wrestle for ninety seconds. <laughs> See, Seth had some wacky screams. Uh, Damian Sandow came in. Cody Rose. <laughs> he did have some wacky screams. That is an accurate yeah. representation of what occurred when he was in the ring. Uh, Sandow got dumped and uh, by Punk, and apparently they stuck around the floor forever, and they never did anything. Kane was number five. He came out in his slacks and uh, tearing off his shirt. And he went after Punk and went for a choke slam, but he got high kicked and then knocked out of the ring. So poor Kane has been so close to breaking HBK's record for eliminations and he still can't get it. And then apparently he, he hit it on the ring for a good hour. Actually, and- what he did was he laid at ringside against the dasher boards, I guess, selling. And then it wasn't until uh, JBL actually showed up, which I think was like 23. <laughs> a long time later. A good that's 40 when, minutes that, later. That's when he snuck under. Interesting. So I guess he just wanted to, uh, you know. Just watch the match for a while. Uh, well, he's, uh, I can he's... tell you that there were a lot of people that work at WWE that uh, uh, whatever they were doing, if they weren't needed at the moment, like people that put stuff up or whatever. I mean, they got a lot of people to work there. They all go out into the crowd and watch the Royal Rumble. So Kane was just one of them. All right. Best moment of the entire night and perhaps my life. Alexander Rusev was number six. Vinny shouted. Vinny was so excited. <laughs> I love Alexander Rusev. <laughs> you love this man like now it's a gimmick. I mean, I like Rusev and all, but come on, Vinny. He's great. Is he really that great? Yes. He kept throwing guys over the ropes and they kept landing on the apron. Yeah. Uh, look, they, they were talking about how big and scary he was and how impressive what an athlete he was. And he was barely in control, clobbering into men. Swagger was number seven. Zeb Colder came out with him. No wheelchair. He's all better. Swagger had a uh, showdown with Rusev, and the crowd was chanting USA because they are xenophobic heathens. <laughs> Kofi Kingston was number eight. He went after Punk. No mention of the fact that they uh, are former tag champions or that they travel together. There's a shot in the corner of Co- uh, uh, what well, was in the corner of the screen, but Kofi retreated to the corner, and Rusev stalked him with his Muay Thai stance. It was great. Oh, it was awesome. Jimmy Uso was nine. Goldust was ten. Tragedy struck as five men teamed up to eliminate Rusev. I got to say, obviously Rusev wasn't going further, but when you debut in the Royal Rumble, you should eliminate someone. I you think Bo I mean? Dallas did. You should eliminate somebody. And then somebody. he got set back down. Yeah. So, uh, I, I I don't know. I don't know. I just think he should have eliminated at least one person. Yeah. Who, who? I mean, he could have eliminated who? Kofi? Well, they had Kofi. Had, he, was, he was there to be the, the prop for Kofi's spot. Yeah. Speaking of which, Rusev's out, and they immediately toss Kofi out onto him. And Rusev catches him, carries him over to the barricade, throws some knees, and leaves him there. So now Kofi is on the barricade, and the ring is way yonder. About eight feet. Yeah. And he's looks around, and everyone, you know, they've shown the replays of him doing the handstand and the pogo stick on the chair thing. 
and everyone knows he's going to do something special. And he just took a deep breath, got a running start, and hurled himself from the barricade to the apron and got back in. It was awesome. It was pretty amazing. Yes. There's my drum board! Indeed. I was talking about this on Observer Live today with uh, Kofi. Uh, Semper Vivi is as brilliant as he can be. Had this crazy idea that uh, that Kofi would be doing whatever his his uh, his wacky feat would be this year, and then someone would be tossed on him and he'd be eliminated. And I thought this was just a terrible idea. My my thing is this: Why do people love Brock Lesnar? He's a big scary guy. Because when Brock Lesnar is out there, you believe that anything could ha- like something bad could happen. Yeah, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Like I think part of the reason, despite the I know it was really long, and that's why you didn't like him beating up the Big Show forever. But there was also that part where you were afraid he may really kill the Big Show. He's hitting him as hard as he can with a chair. He might break his arm. He might cut him open. I never thought that. I did. But anyway. Brock Lesnar is great because you're always afraid that some something bad will happen. There will be some sort of real life danger of some sort. You know what I mean? So people know wrestling is phony, so to speak, but they like things about it that are real. And Kofi's physical stunt to get back in the Royal Rumble is real. And it's not like it's it's so over that people are gonna buy the Royal Rumble for it. But it's something you can do every year. When he ran out, what did Craig say? What's he going to do this year? Actually, let me... Uh... <laughs> oh, God. What's he going to do this year? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, it was like, it's exciting for Craig. So uh... you're always watching, and you're like, man, what if a fan pushes him off the barricade? Yeah. What if he yeah. slips and crotches the barricade? What if he runs, but he loses his balance and falls off the barricade? There's a sense of real danger. And believe it or not, he is on something of a streak. So I think that he should just keep doing it. He gets a little older every year. He gets a little slower, a little less limber. And you're just kind of waiting for the day that, oops, damn it. (laughs) He fucked it up. Isn't that fun? Maybe I'm the only one. No, no, that's your point. I'm I'm waiting for him to get tossed out and there's a bunch of other bodies. And so he like uses them like Indiana Jones where he uses them like step stones, you know, all the way back to the ring. I swear somebody did that. Maybe. I think Sean did that once, but um, there's other ideas. Yeah. Keep, keep thinking. Ambrose was number 11. Dolph was number 12. And I joked earlier about uh, Hacksaw maybe not uh, watching the show. Pittsburgh loved Dolph Ziggler. Got a huge reaction. He loved Dolph. So, uh, I mean, I mean, by this point in the show, the biggest stars were Brian and then Punk and then Dolph. Honestly. Truth was 13. He got eliminated almost immediately. Followed quickly by uh, the uh, Jimmy Uso. There's all the shield doing all this. There was a ridiculous spot where uh, Kofi was almost eliminated. He was actually hanging upside down from Swagger's boot. I somehow managed to get the boot off and get back in. Kevin Nash was number 14. Kevin Nash. He was not Diesel this year. He was Kevin Nash. Ziggler got a huge pop, by the way. Did we mention that? Yes. He did get a huge reaction. <laughs> I'm just looking back to make sure I didn't miss anything in my notes. Yeah, I was reading Twitter earlier, too. Sorry. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so uh, Nash dumped Swagger. It's funny about Nash is uh, he's old. Well, <laughs> his knees are shot. So uh, a couple days ago, here, Nash. Uh, I don't know if he posted it or if maybe somebody mentioned something and he posted it. But there's a picture of him with his newly dyed hair. Yes, he said he said he was getting called in for a, yes. an audition. Yeah, he claimed mm-hmm. he, he. I mean, everyone once he dyed his hair, everyone thought he must be a rumble surprise. So Nash, I guess, to try to uh, convince everyone otherwise, explained that I'm up for a movie role, and they wanted to see what I looked like with dark hair. And immediately I was like, you're full of it, homie. Because have you ever tried to dye your hair gray? No. No. (laughs) Because you can't find gray hair dye. It doesn't exist. So why would they say we want to see what it looks like brown? Because if they don't like it, you're fucked. That bubble you live in is amazing. You can't just go dye it gray, <laughs> right? That's your answer to this question. Sure. And when you see Kevin Nash with gray hair, it's like, man, I can't imagine what this guy would look like with brown hair. The only way for me to know is if he dyes it brown. See, I would have just gone with... It's ridiculous. 
ridiculous. Could have gone with. He could send them a, one of his dozens of headshots. Sure. His hair has been black, b- blonde, brown, and gray exactly. over the years. Exactly. And long and short. Exactly. And silver when he was Oz. So very skeptical Had of a his, mohawk his claim. Even more so now when he appeared in the Rumble. So I was watching this show, and at this point I was thinking, man, there's just too many guys in the ring. So, and conveniently, right then, out came Roman Reigns. Craig's crying over there. I don't even know why. You can't dye your hair gray. <laughs> you can't. You can't, huh? No! <laughs> you can't dye your hair gray. Really? Okay, you go online and find <laughs> me where you can dye your hair gray. Help me, Twitter. I, my God, seriously. You can't! <laughs> Bix here has sent me uh, just for men touch of gray. That doesn't add gray. That's when you have a full head of white hair and you just want a little gray left. It puts color in and leaves a little gray. Vince is dying. You will not find gray hair dye. Oh, because there's so many men. There's so many men that are like, man, if only my hair was gray. I'm going to go buy some gray hair dye. It doesn't exist. Gray hair dye. Uh-huh. He'll never find it. Hair color dark oh, gray. I'm getting a... Uh... <laughs> Ardell Labs gray magic color. Yeah, but that's fake. You can't go to a movie with fake gray hair. What? What? When did Roman Reigns come out again? Let's move on. <laughs> Swag machine. How to dye your hair gray. Can we move on with Roman Reigns now? No, let's talk about this for another <laughs> hour. It's a blonde woman. She has a, what is this? A fanciful. <laughs> the product of the left is Wella Color Charm in 050. That's what's happening in the show right now. The other product is Rue Fancyful Temporary Hair Color in True Steel. Yeah, temporary. Uh-huh. Let's move on. So Roman and Reigns hit the ring. And it's about time to get everyone tossed out. And uh, threw Kofi over the ropes. He uh, Dolph hit him with a DDT, but Rain shrugged that off, speared him to death, and dumped him. And the crowd booed passionately because they loved Dolph. He threw Nash out, which was ugly. And then right after Nash got dumped, Great Khali came out as number 16. We were so close to getting Kevin Nash versus the Great Khali. That's not the biggest tragedy of this, but we'll talk about that later. Bigger even than Daniel Bryan not even being in it. Yeah. So Khali got in there, lumbered around. Shield threw him out. Uh, Goldust charged the ropes, and whoever was in the shield he was aiming at dodged, and Goldust accidentally knocked Cody out. Ooh. And the shield turned around and knocked Goldust out, too. You know all that talk about Cody and, and Goldust at WrestleMania? I mean, that was the idea, like, a year ago. And and they keep having these great matches, and everybody's talking about how it'd be a tragedy if they did this match at WrestleMania. They shouldn't break up. They shouldn't stop teaming. Looks like... <laughs> Plans aren't changing this time. No. So, at this point, it was down to the Shield and Punk alone. But before they could kill Punk, Sheamus came out as number 17. Yes, Sheamus. What a shocker. And uh, he made his big return. Ran wild. The crowd was happy to see him at this point. He ran wild and everybody hit the clubber and forearms on Ambrose. Tore his shirt up at one point. Dean has abs. He's lean. Didn't get anyone out. Uh, Fandango was at 19. Oh, excuse me. Miz was 18. Then Fandango was 19. Everyone in the crowd was Fandangoing. Miz nearly threw him out, which would have pissed me off. Nothing happened for a while, so the crowd decided, decided to chant for Daniel Bryan again. You poor bastards. Number 20, all in white, was El Torito. Yeah. Came in, ran wild. He is awesome. Did some comedy with Punk, but then Punk ended up beating a head scissors. And then he ended up uh, head scissoring Fandango into the ropes and then drop kicking, drop kicking him out. So, yes, Torito eliminated Fandango. And then Reigns promptly eliminated Torito onto Fandango. Cesaro was number 21. Damn it. That's the tragedy. If they would have waited like two minutes, we could have had Cesaro giant swing the bull. Mm-hmm. I've been begging for this. Begging for this. Why could you not have him swing the bull in the Royal Rumble? That's what I thought. No good reason. So, uh, he immediately hit Miz with a giant swing. Punk did the dropkick spot. And then Cesaro attacked the shield. Hit a swing on Rollins. He was still swinging when the buzzer went off for Luke Harper at 22. Mm-hmm. Not much happened. Uso By the was- way, Craig's son, huge fan of the bull. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Huge pop when the bull came out. <laughs> Jay Uso was 23. Antonio Cesaro and Luke Harper had a battle straight out of Chikara. Number 24 was, in fact, John Bradshaw Layfield. And he stood up for the announce desk without saying a word. He took off his cowboy hat. He climbed the steps to get in the ring. Cole said this was the Royal Rumble debut of the JBL character. His exact words. Sure was. JBL got in the ring, removed his jacket, called Cole over to come get it, handed his jacket to Cole, turned around, and got dumped by Roman Reigns. All Cole's fault, as usual. Fans booed. JBL stood up, put his jacket back on, sat down, and started talking about Batista. <laughs> Fans, by the way, chanted, you still got it. You still got it. Yep. Let me say something about the Torito, uh, the midget, or the, oops, sorry. Is that, ah, you know, it, he's it, a midget wrestler. It's okay when you're talking wrestling. I, yeah, I've, I've discussed this before. I once read a, anyway. So, uh, why does your little fella like Torito so much? Because he's the same size. The same reason that the Hardys were so over. The same reason that you don't want everybody what? to look. Oh, let me, hold on, Vinny. Let me continue here. You know, you can't dye your hair gray. The same <laughs> Reason someone on Twitter just said the number of, of bottles of gray hair that I'm going to get for Christmas next year is going to be ridiculous. <laughs> uh, the same reason that the Hardys were over it, the, sa- the same reason that you don't want everyone to look like John Cena and Randy Orton. Because in professional wrestling, there need to be a wide variety of characters because people want to get behind someone who they look at and go, That guy's just like me. That's why little kids like little fellas. Okay. That guy's just like me. That's why kids love Ray. Ray's like a little kid in there with the big guys. You know? That's why you should have a little guy and a fat guy and a guy who works out and maybe a guy who looks like an accountant. Now, this doesn't mean these men should be main eventers. It just means there should be somebody that everybody can get behind. Everybody should have one guy on wrestling that they can go, that guy's like me. That's why the Hardys were over, because fans looked at them and they're like, here's two geeks. I shouldn't say geeks, but here's two people like me. They're not too big. They're not too small, even though they actually are very big. But you wouldn't know that in 1998. Here's two skinny guys. You know, they look like they were backyarders. They do a bunch of flips. Man, if I were a wrestler, I'd be one of the Hardys. Same with Lita. You know, that's why they were so popular. That's why Torito and Rey Mysterio and all these guys are so popular with kids. That's why you need a Congo. For the guys that are bigger and have face paint. Right? <laughs> God damn it. You <laughs> were doing so well. It's doing so well. I should have done this one. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. All right, move on, Vinny. I'm done. Eric Rowan was 25, and he and Harper finally threw the Miz out. Yay. Shield and Wyatt had a stare down. Right back was 26. Fans mistook him for Goldberg. Sheamus and Cesaro traded European uppercuts in the Battle of Ireland versus Switzerland. Del Rio was 27. The ring was getting full again, and most of them were bad guys. Number 28 was Big Dave. Let's talk about Dave's appearance. Let's. If you thought Dave had a ridiculous outfit on Monday Night Raw, I can only imagine what you thought about how he looked at the Royal Rumble. Dave was wearing the, uh, not tights, but the trunks that go to, like, a little bit they go below the hip. Not quite mid-thigh. Like the kind Billy Gunn wears. It, that's a strange look for a man with giant legs. Mm. And he had, uh, well, giant giant thighs. Okay. Giant thighs. He had uh, giant knee pads on that went like way above and way below the knee. And then like short shoes. Shooter shoes. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. And then itty bitty skinny little calves. The smallest calves I've seen on a large man. Yeah. Usually... Any fat guy in any gym, he's going to have huge calves because he's been carrying around all that extra weight upstairs. Not speaking from any experience at all. But um, Dave's legs were chicken-like. Chicken-like? They were chicken legs. Hmm. He's got to do something. He's got to get longer boots. I'm thinking something uh, from the... Thigh uh, high? Yeah, something from the uh, hooker line. (laughs) Well, he... Nah, never mind. (laughs) Let's move on. He, uh, Dave got in there. He dumped Rowan. He dumped Ryback. Del Rio promptly super kicked him in the head, just as he promised to do. And then he went for the arm bar, but Dave did the Bob Backlund deadlift spot and threw him out too. 
Big E was 29. He began to throw around Dave Batista and Sheamus, who are enormous men to be throwing around. Yeah. Big E is a freak. So there was uh, only one man left, and I don't know if the fans had scorecards or uh, if they had been paying attention to the promos before the match because Rey Mysterio spoke in that promo. But they forgot about Rey, and they thought 30 was going to be somebody else. <laughs> they sure did. So they were chanting for Daniel Bryan. They were chanting, yes, and I knew that uh, Ray was in this and he was not in yet. And I thought, man, this is going to suck. And oh, I had no idea. So Ray Mysterio came out and Ray Mysterio got booed. And he ran wild and hit all the spots. Fans were booing. They were chanting for Brian. And then they just gave up. And, th- and then they did it. They gave up on the show. Yep. They just started booing everyone. And everyone, no matter what they did, was met with just lukewarm boos. And you know, when Dave first came out, he got booze because there were enough people in the building that knew that he was the guy that was probably going to win. Mm-hmm. And then when they found out Daniel Bryan wasn't in and they realized that, in fact, Daniel Bryan was not going to win the Royal Rumble. And, and of the guys in there, Batista was the most likely winner, as they had figured. They just didn't care about the match anymore. So Ray got eliminated. As we noted, people cheered as if it was Ray Mysterio's fault. Yeah, he booked the Royal Rumble, everybody. <laughs> Reigns eliminated Harper. Uh, the, the the key spot was Ambrose tried to eliminate Reigns, tried to dump him from behind, but Rollins actually made the save. And as Rollins and Ambrose were bickering, Cesaro came up to brawl with both of them, and then Reigns recovered and dumped all three of them at once. This gave us a final four of Roman Reigns, Dave Batista, CM Punk, and Sheamus. Kane quickly reappeared. He yanked Punk over the ropes and then out of the out of the ring to the floor. Uh, Jubs point out, this may count as Kane's elimination. He may have tied Sean here. So, uh, Rain so, set a record. What's that? Rain set the record. I don't know if it was the overall record or just the He per, set the single match record. Single match record. Okay. Kane, Kane tied Sean for career elimination. I see. Yes. So, uh, yeah. But it was, so now it was Reigns and Batista and Sheamus and, one guy would fire up and the crowd would boo, and the other guy would fire up and they'd boo louder, and then the third guy would fire up and they'd just boo more. These fans hated the world. They hated Dave, they hated Seamus, hated Reigns, hated you, hated me, everyone. They were pissed. I bet Kane's record doesn't stand. He was eliminated. I think you're right, actually. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> had a great spot where Seamus tried to bo- road kick and Dave ducked, and then nothing happened. <laughs> that was the whole spot. So Reigns eliminated Sheamus. That was his 12th elimination. That was the record for a single match. And it now came down to Roman Reigns and Batista. And so, uh, the crowd switched gears a little bit here. They didn't want Dave to win. Yes. They would have cheered for anyone else. They did cheer for Roman Reigns. They chanted Roman's Reigns, Roman Reigns' name. It was the last time they, the last time they cheered from when Ray came out. They cheered when Ray got eliminated. And they cheered here at the very end when it was down to Reigns and Dave. So Dave uh, uh, fired up and got booed outrageously, turned around, ate a spear, everyone cheered, and then Dave reversed the toss and sent Reigns out of the ring to win, and everyone just, there was this more lukewarm booing, and boos, and boos, and boos, and boos, and a big pyro celebration, and then just more boos, and more boos, and more boos. So this show was unforgettable. (laughs) That's for sure. I will never forget the 2014 Royal Rumble. Uh, to recap this show in a uh, brief sentence, started out amazing, got horrendously boring, and then unforgettable. So there you go, everybody. WrestleMania, it is, believe it or not, Randy Orton versus Batista, Bray Wyatt versus John Cena, Brock Lesnar versus The Undertaker. What other matches am I forgetting? Uh, Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. Gold Dust, Cody Rhodes. Gold Dust versus Cody, most likely. And I may be forgetting another one here or there. Maybe but. a unification match with... Uh, That's right. Uh, Biggie Langston yeah. and, uh, Dean and Dean Ambrose, which may be at uh, Elimination, uh, Chamber. Elimination Chamber. So, yeah. Which is funny because going in, that was the expected card. Coming out, that was the expected card. And the show where they put it all together, everybody hated. So yeah. maybe this card is uh, not the card that at least this audience wanted well, to see. Well, maybe they were hoping for something... To be changed. Maybe they were hoping for some swerve. They, yeah. they they told you what where you were going in the end, and they were hoping 
Maybe they'll come to their senses. No, uh, no Sting. No Sting. Not yet. No Hulk Hogan. Not yet. No Hulk Hogan yet. No AJ Styles. No AJ Styles, although that was not expected. So, uh, was was there any was there ever a plan on the table for Piper and Hogan at No Jake Roberts. Piper wanted to be Piper wanted to, him and Hogan to have a match. Okay. But Hogan cannot have a match. Right. So uh There you go. Hmm. So Ethan Carter is doing some tweeting. I I'm actually that's where I was at as I was trying to answer Craig here. Carry on. Uh, go ahead and read some of it. First one. Congrats Dave. <laughs> Followed by, always refreshing to see a guy start at the bottom, grind it out, work hard, in all caps, sacrifice, and be recognized on a grand stage. There are a lot of scumbags in that industry who will do anything to sabotage the most talented with the most heart for unbeknownst reasons. Like the literal worst, people who have no right being in positions they are in. Insane to comprehend almost. Mind-boggling. But as long as you stay the course, stay in the game, work and believe, your talents will truly be recognized. Success is best revenge. Having said that, just like to again say, congrats, Dave. This guy works in TNA. That's fascinating. No, read the rest of it. Uh, oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice this. Congrats, <laughs> Dave. Mr. Grohl, adding another Grammy to his resume. Yeah. A constant inspiration <laughs> to all. Okay. So there you go. Uh,